Hi folks and welcome back to Lotus Tech Talk. Um, I think I owe you a little bit of an explanation because you haven't seen a lot of videos from me recently on Lotus Elise. We've done a whole raft of videos last year, but believe me, more are coming this year. And I know that a lot of you have subscribed to my channel specifically for the Lotus Elise and not only for Old Trusty. Uh, I have different groups of people that I have different interests. So that's why I always uh, like to please everybody. Now, for my Lotus lovers, uh, please keep commenting on my videos. Please keep correcting me because I really like to learn from you. But a little look back on 2018, uh, I think is in place here. We picked up a Lotus Elise and when I found the Elise, I thought it was a standard Elise S2 from 2003. But it turned out to be a 135R, which is a limited edition. And I believe it's around 160 or so that were built in different colors. So I picked it up and it was actually a total loss. Once we dragged it home, um, I started to check on it and I found out that it was number 64 out of a series, which was quite uh, nice to see. And it was actually conditioned and prepared by Lotus Ports. Uh, that was a nice find actually. But during the whole process of checking it out, all on all the parts that had to be changed, we found out that uh, there were a lot of uh, high cost items that were destroyed. And that included the clamshells and the, the crash box, because that's an expensive piece. Uh, so we decided to move ahead anyhow. Um, although I only paid 6,000 euros for the total loss of Elise, it, I thought I could fix it for a reasonable price, but that has turned out to be a bit different. But then again, I did a lot more work than I was expected to do. Anyhow, um, the first thing I did when we got the Lotus Elise in the workshop is actually to measure out the straightness of the chassis. Because if the chassis is bent, then you should not continue with it because then, you know, it's useless. You might as well toss it away. And I would have sold it in piece parts. Nevertheless, the chassis was good. We checked the alignment of the chassis, everything was in place. So then we took off the clamshells and I didn't throw them away. I kept them on the side. You never know for small pieces. Um, once the clamshells were off, uh, we saw the damage on the radiator housing and the actual crash box. Uh, we had to take off the crash box and believe me, that is a very tedious job and had a lot of good comments from many different people on how careful you have to do that. Now I did it very careful, but it may not always show up like that in the videos. But if you want to see it, just check that video. Um, I ordered a new crash box, but with Lotus, this takes forever and a day, believe me. Uh, this, is, this is a very lengthy process. I had to wait four months on the new crash box. Meanwhile, we continue working on the car. And you might remember that in the back uh, of the car, we had actually a wire wrapped around the drive shaft. So I had to replace the drive shafts on one side at least because the gator was gone. And I replaced both drive shafts. I, I just didn't want to do a single one of them. I just did both. And while I was at it, I decided to rebuild the whole suspension uh, that meant actually changing one wishbone in the back because that was bent by the crash. But then also changing the bushes in the wishbones and I went for those bearing based bushes. I think they are great and they turned out to be great. Uh, so we did that part and it took a little bit of time but it's actually a quite easy job when the clamshells are off. I also changed the ball joints um, on the wishbones because I was at it anyhow. And uh, changing the ball joints is an easy job with the right tools. Um, and actually I replaced the original ball joints with adjustable racing ball joints. Oh, the uprights uh, I kept because those were in good condition. However, I did change the bearings on them. Uh, now I have uh, brand new bearings all around the vehicle. Some people said that it was not necessary to change out the bearings because they are very solid and very good on the Lotus Elise. Well, that might very well be the case, but I did it anyhow. Once I've done the bearings, uh, I decided to change the brake the brake system. I changed the discs and I swapped out the solid steel discs with uh, bell discs. And a bell disc is a disc based on an aluminium core where you bolt it down to the wheel hub and then you have a steel rim uh, or ring around it where the brake uh, pads are gripping on. Um, we actually changed the, uh, the flex hoses on the brake system as well because one of them was ripped apart. We changed all the brake pads with the racing pads. 
we took all the air out of the system. Actually, we cleaned, we cleaned the whole braking system, all the tubing and all the cylinders and so on. And then finally, uh, we moved on to adjusting the manual brake because that cable was heavily uh, corroded. So I did change that brake cable um, and adjusted the rear brakes. And although they are self-adjusting to some extent, but you can still do some uh, work on that. Now. Um, one of the things I did at the same time was actually changing the gear shifting mechanism. Now Lotus Elise S2 is using cables. Uh, there's two cables that go from the front of the stick shift all the way back to the gearbox. And um, yeah, over time they go. And this is in Lotus Elise from 2003 with about 60,000 kilometers on it. So it's about time I, I thought to change those cables since I had easy access to it. Now that is a very tedious job to do, but I did and I replaced them with motorsport cables. So now I've got the whole vehicle almost ready, although I still had to do the alignment of the wheel base and, and so on. So I needed to check and align the toe in and the toe out and the camber. And before I started doing that, I changed the toe rod, toe control, the toe control rod on the rear wheels because that one was also damaged. And in fact, that is a weak spot of the Lotus Elise. Uh, always check that because if those tie rods are gone um, while you're driving or racing, you're going to have a serious issue. So I changed those with the motorsport type and, and they're really good, good quality and they look nice as well and it's easy to replace so I've done that. Um, and then we adjusted the alignment of the vehicle. We did some other small stuff. We al aligned the windows, you know, the roll-up windows on the side of the Lotus Elise because they tend to sink a bit and you can adjust them in different directions, you know, upwards and sideways and bending left or right. Uh, you can see all that in the videos. We also then uh, started to work at the end uh, on the new crash box because it finally arrived. And putting the new crash box up is easier than you think. Uh, it looks complicated, but it's easy. As long as you align the car properly uh, you, and you support the crash box after you glued it on there. Now, gluing it onto the chassis, aluminum chassis, was a bit of a problem because I didn't know exactly uh, what product to use. And the original products that are recommended by Lotus are very hard to get because they are hazardous materials. You can't get them shipped by post. And it was very hard to get them. I think they came from down chemicals initially, uh, but I replaced them with something else uh, which is called carbon. This is the kind of stuff that people use to put glazing into vehicles. Uh, I got this tip from a, a Lotus dealership and that's what they all the time use. So we got the new crash box on it, we got it glued on and it worked perfectly. And then afterwards we mounted the new racing radiator and it's an aluminum radiator. Although the original one might still have been okay, but um, I wasn't sure because the car had had a crash, so there may have been leaks. And I didn't want to swap it out again after I had the new front clamshell onto the vehicle. So we did it before that. Um, and then finally uh, the car was ready to be cranked up for the first time. And this was quite exciting and so I, I just put it together and I took it for a spin. Uh, believe it or not, I took it for a spin without the clamshells on. <laughs> so people looked a bit weird at me and I'm sure that the cops wouldn't have liked it but they didn't spot me so, so what right. And of course by the end of last year uh, I got finally the two new clamshells. Well they are not necessarily new. The rear one is a second hand one in very good condition and already been prepared. The front one is a second hand one as well but it is in a pretty bad shape so I still have to fix that one. And this is a video you will see coming out as well in 2019 how I'm fixing the clamshells with serious damage on it, on how I cut out pieces from my old clamshell and uh, putting it in the new one. And you might remember the video where I, where I tried to use an aluminum or a steel plate in the back instead of polyester to glue things together. Well, that's going to be the method I probably will be using to enforce everything. There is one more thing that I will have to do in 2019 and that is actually fixing the tip of the side panel and you've seen that as well. And there's a lot of debate ongoing on how I should do it. Should I change the whole side panel or not? Or should I just, you know, do the tip or cut it down a little bit further down? Um, where I have a more solid um, 
touch uh, area with the chassis. I don't know yet. That's yet to be seen in 2019, and I hope you will enjoy that video as well. And uh, then you will see the, the, the spray job and the further assembly of the lights and all the little parts. And then finally, um, we're going to take it for a spin. Now, once we've done that, then I'm going to show you um, a new app that I have uh, almost developed. It's not ready yet. Uh, that you can see on your iPhone or your iPad and you have all the different dials because I'm going to read out with Bluetooth uh, live while you're driving uh, the ECU uh, parameters uh, on the MAF and the MAP and the turbo if you have a turbo um, you know air temperature, water, pr uh, water temperature, oil pressure, all these different things that you can get through an OBD2 interface uh, and that's uh, coming up next and if I have the chance, uh, and if it does work properly, uh, I will make it available to you guys if you're interested in it. You will be able to download it from some website. Now, I've done work on the engine already. Uh, I upgraded the cooling system, more specifically the um, radiator housing, uh, which prevents thermal shock on the gas, uh, the head gasket. Um, but that video is still to come. I haven't done that video so far. I still have to uh, put it together, but I have it raw. I also uh, have a video which is coming out in 2019 on how to adjust your uh, timing belt or how to replace the timing belt together with the water pump um, and the spanner for that. So these are videos that I'm going to make next year. And that, guys, is uh, about it. So there's still a lot of stuff to come in 2019 on Lotus Elise. I haven't forgotten about you, so don't worry about it. I'm just an ordinary guy who is trying to do his best and tries to share his experiences with all of you. So, thank you for viewing and I hope to see you in one of my next Lotus Tech Talk videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.